Hey all, Tony Bing here, hello and welcome to another in-depth review for Marvel Strike Force. Now, in tonight's video we will have a look at the awesome crossbones and in the video we will start off by having a look at where you would unlock them, we'll check out these tags and we'll have a general overview of them. We'll then follow that up by having a look at his stats, we'll check out his abilities, we'll then look at the synergies, this is teams you want to place them in and also enemies that you want to avoid going up against with them and then we'll finish up by seeing where we would place them in the overall tier as well. So first off, we'll start by looking at where you would unlock them in a general overview. Crossbones then has really had a bit of a roller coaster ride so far. He's went from being one of the weakest characters in the game to one of the strongest, and it was all down to patch 0.31 where we've seen some changes to his special skill and also his ultimate. Now, if we look at the places you can farm him, you can get him in blitz mode. He's available via a special event as well, so you can unlock him nice and easy at the start of the game, and then you can farm him from that point onwards from Villains 4.9. Now, if you look at the tags that are available on him, the ones of interest are the Hydra and also Tech. They'll be relevant when we talk about synergies and also the Protector tag. Now, the reason it's important we discuss that straight away is that he is a tank class, but he's actually a little bit squishy, so you want to use him more as an off tank and you want to pair him up with another tank as well. And again, that's something we will discuss when we get to the synergies, but the next section we will actually look at will be his stats. So as always, quick overview of how I broke down the stats and what we'll be looking at. We'll be checking out three offensive stats and also three defensive stats. The way I've calculated these, they're on a scale from A to F, and what I've done is I've looked at the maximum and minimum stats for each category, I've removed any outliers, and I broke that down into a percentage, and that percentage is then broken down into the A to F scale as well, to give us an idea how the hero does perform. But let's check out the offensive stats here. So the offensive stats we look at here, we've got damage, speed and focus. Now offensively he is a bit lower, but that's because the fact that he is meant to be a protector class. Damage comes in at D, although when we get to his ultimate that really won't make much difference. He then has speed at D, so he's a bit slower and you need to make sure you have other people protecting him or throwing up buffs on him to keep him alive to fire off his ultimate. And then finally his focus is way down at F there, so his focus would be applicable when you're trying to apply the offence down on his basics. You don't want to use that on a character that's got high resistance or the chances are it simply won't apply. Now next up we'll check out his defensive stats. So defensively then if we compare crossbones to the other tanks he certainly does come in a bit lower on the scale. He's got D for health, B for armour, armour reduces the incoming damage you take and then also his resistance is C as well. Now that of course does seem a bit on the low side for a tank and that's why I'd recommend using them as an off tank, however it isn't as bad as it does first appear. He's a bit like Spidey in that he's got other parts of his kit that can make up for any inefficiencies when it comes to defence, so what he has that does help him out, he's got a 15% heal on his special and as part of his passive he can actually gain up to 20% max health as well, so that can certainly help out and make him a bit beefier, but do always run him with that second tank. Now for the next section what we'll do is we'll check out his abilities. When we check out the abilities for him then what we'll do is we'll look at them based on the fact they would be level 7 for his basic special and ultimate and level 5 which is maximum for his passive. Now his passive is called Vengeance. When this is maxed out it will offer you 20% max health and also Hydra allies gain plus 5 armor. Now I've checked the msf.gg site, I've also checked in game and it does say that it's 5 armor that it offers which I think is some kind of mistake. I believe it's potentially should be 5% armor because currently in game I'm sitting at 2400 armor on crossbones, so 5 would be useless. That's something that if I find out the answer to what it should be, then what I'll do is I'll leave some comments below in the description of this particular video. 
For his basic attack we have a skill called Piston Punch, so when maxed out this one will do 160% damage to the primary target. It also has a 75% chance of a bonus attack for 150% damage and that will also apply a fence down as well. Now something that's quite interesting is when we look at his special in a moment which offers counter attack that can actually proc the bonus attack which will then apply the fence down so that can be really useful when that does happen. For the special then we have a skill called Raft and this is a free turn cooldown and it does come fully charged so you could use it at the start if you wanted but I wouldn't do that. Now with this you gain taunt and 2-3 to three counter, 3 counter is pretty huge, bearing in mind it has a chance to proc the offence down on his basic as well and you also heal yourself for 15% max health. So you don't want to use it at the start of battle because chances are you hopefully haven't lost any health yet and also you want to be running the off tank that will use the taunt instead. So we now come to the skill that's the real game changer for Drax and this is what pulls him into the higher tiers of characters available within the game. This is Detonate. Now it would take in total 6 turns to charge but when you're at level 7 with it, it can actually charge in 2 turns and this can completely change the tide of a battle. Now when you cast this, you'll gain 2 death proof and then you explode for a huge 510% damage. You do damage to yourself you also do damage to enemies as well and most of the times to be honest after you've cast this it's game over for the other side so you don't really have to worry too much about the health loss. I would avoid using it in modes such as story mode if you're trying to gain 3 stars because there is a chance that his health could go on the lower side so that is something just to bear in mind. But for the next section what we'll do is we'll look at the synergies and this is teams you would want to place them in and also other characters you would want to avoid. When we look at the allies that you would want to pair them up with, they really break down into two categories, offensive and defensive. Now, defensive you have the hand sentry who's fantastic because you can apply the two turns of stealth and if we remember back to the ultimate a moment ago, when that's fully upgraded you can fire it off in two turns so the sentry can potentially protect you for the whole duration of the charge on it. Now, other tanks that can work really well with them would be Captain America and also Luke Cage because they have a chance of generating energy for their allies which means they could charge his ultimate even quicker. When we get to the fun part here, which is the offensive side of things, if you were to run with Winter Soldier, that would give you an additional 10% crit rating on him because he's a Hydra ally. You add in Rocket Raccoon and he provides 5% extra damage to tech characters and then you finish up with Iron Man who provides a whopping 25% crit chance to tech characters. So in total you can be looking at buffing his crit chance which starts off at 10% way up to 45% and give him 5% additional damage as well. It'd be a bit of a risky team to run but if you run that with the hand sentry and potentially another tank that is an option that could be a whole lot of fun. Now next up what we'll do is we'll look at the characters that you want to avoid going up against with them. So there's two things you really want to bear in mind when it comes to crossbones. The first one is the fact that you'll need to pair them up with another tank, preferably hand sentry. So you want to bear in mind characters that can attack quicker than hand sentry can get the evade and stealth up. So that would include Gamora and Elektra. The reason I've included day two is they can hit really hard so there's a strong chance that they could do a whole lot of damage on crossbones straight away before the stealth goes up on them. Now, other characters that you would want to avoid, this isn't potentially as important as the Gamora and Elektra, but it is still relevant. It would be Wolverine, Yondu and Punisher. The reason for that is these are characters that have a lot of pierce in their kit, and if we remember back to the stats, the one thing that pulled the survivability of Crossbones up a little bit was the fact he has armour, but the pierce will actually work its way through that. So that's something to bear in mind there. But next up what we'll do is we'll run over my general thoughts and we'll see where he's placed in the shield classification tier list. So 
So overall, Crossbones is a really nice character. There's various different places in the game you can farm him, so he's nice and easy to start up. Myself, I'm at 6 star already, and I don't reckon it'll be too long before I'm able to push him to 7 star. Now, one of the slight downsides is the fact that I've mentioned he's an off tank, so you're going to have to use another character slot, and we do only have 5 of them, to drop some in to actually protect them to get that ultimate off. However, when you do get that ultimate off, wow, and that's the reason why I rate him so highly. It really is incredible and it looks pretty fantastic as well. So let's actually now look and see where we would place him on the tier list. When it comes to the tier classification then, we have five different levels. The weakest one we start off with is level one and then it works its all the way up to a mega tier which is reserved for the best of heroes and that's why Yondu is currently sitting there at the moment. We also have Spider-Man in close second place there, he's classed as an alpha tier hero. Let's see where we would place Crossbones anyway. So there we go, we have our second alpha tier character. Now the reason Crossbones there in, in simple terms, he's an exceptionally strong character, the reason he doesn't push into the mega category is the fact that he does have to rely on other characters to see his full potential in order to keep him alive and get that ultimate skill off. But Overall, Alpha is still a very good character and one I would highly recommend farming. So as always, I uh, do hope this particular video has been useful. Next up, I think I'm actually going to do Electra and that way I've covered both the characters that are available early game via the events. That way it would give you a good idea if it's worthwhile pushing extra resources into leveling those characters up. So as always, thanks for tuning in. I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you all again soon.